Hello everyone, this is Kathy Jo from I'm a Little Teapot and what I'd like to do is share a tutorial to uh, make this card. It's a new release stamp from the uh, Crafter's Companion. It, well, right now it's on the HSN site so you can buy the stamp uh, with three other uh, stamps in the set. So the stamp I'm sharing today is The Best View Comes After the Hardest Climb. The three other stamps in the collection are Believe in Yourself, Plan A, and Wake Up Smile. So today's card is, is a watercolor card, and it, it's quite simple to make. There, there will be times in this where I'm just going to uh, show off the camera so that I can um, just work on a detail so I don't take up too much of your time, but it, it really is a, a quick and simple card, and um, it's so bright and cheerful that um, I hope that you find pleasure in watching the video and that you'll try to uh, make a card uh, yourself. So the card is, uh, it's six by six. The, the front was created on the aqua paper from uh, Spectrum Noir. Here's the sheet from the, from the pad. It's a really good uh, watercolor paper. Over the weekend I bought a couple of other pads of paper just to try them out and compare them. And I really find that this paper is great and it works well with the Harmony inks. Um, so you'll need the watercolor paper, the stamp, and I'm using, like I said, the watercolor, uh, the water reactive inks. A couple of blending brushes would be nice. Um, if you have either a watercolor brush or, um, or um, just a standard one or a water uh, brush, um, both of those will work uh, well too. So let's go ahead and get started with the card. So the card base is, um, like I said, six by six. So I made the, the scene, the watercolor scene, as five and a half by five and a half. And to make the background, I'm using two of the Harmony inks, Parakeet for the sky and Grasshopper for the hill. So a, a good thing to do when you're making this card is to take the plastic that comes with the stamp out so that this way you can kind of get a really good guess on um, where you want your quote to be and um, ensure that your hill that you're making doesn't uh, go into the quote because on the hill you're going to have flowers and you, you kind of don't want the flowers overlapped by the uh, quote. So I'm going to take uh, my brush here, make sure I grab the right color. And what I'll do is I'll just create the hill with the green. I think I'm gonna make the hill just a little bit bigger. And so what you're going to do, you're just going to kind of blend in the, the hill using the green. And the good thing is, is that it doesn't have to be a consistent monotone hill because, you know, this, this is a grass covered hill and there's also flowers on it. So it's not going to be a monotonous color. Um, actually, the different uh, shades of green and the different um, textures that you get with your green will add even more uh, detail onto your card. Okay, so I'm just going to add some more ink onto this. I'll try to move uh, quickly in, in some of the spots. And like I said, I'm going to turn the camera off in other spots so that... Uh, uh, you're not sitting there for it longer than necessary. Just add a little bit more green on the bottom there. Maybe a little bit of green there. Okay, so that's my hill. A little bit more there. Okay. So I'm going to set the green aside because we're going to use this again. Next we have the sky that we have to make and I'm going to use the parakeet, a water reactive dye. 
Okay. So just like the grass, it, it doesn't have to be consistent across the sky. I love how these two colors look next to each other. It's so bright and cheerful, and it reminds me of just a lovely summer's day. It's a little bit more blue in there. Okay, so there's your hill, and my fingers must have oil or something on them, so I'll fix that. There. So we're done with the blue. We'll set that aside. And the next step is to create the grass and the stems for our flower. So uh, throughout the hill, what we'll do is we'll take um, a little bit of the green. And I think of it. I'm going to wipe this off so I don't get blue. And dab the pad on my mat. I'm going to use a water brush, see how that works out. Um, these were kind of runny earlier when I tried them out, so hopefully you can see that I used yellow last with this. Sorry about that. Okay, so to do the grass but, and the stems for the flowers, um, this is a hill scene from, you're looking at it from a little bit further away, so you don't have to have a lot of detail in the grass or the stems. So what I'm doing is I'm barely, uh, barely using any water and uh, just getting a really nice fine point with my grass and my stems, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to start from the bottom and just kind of flick up. So I can do that, I can go sideways, give it a little bit of a detail, like maybe that they're kind of blowing in the breeze or just uh, heavy with flowers. So on the top of my card, or on top of the hill, that's where the tulips are going to be. So I'm just going to kind of Take it and just kind of flick up. That's really wet. So I'm doing three, but you can do uh, sets of like four or do little bitty ones like that. And what you want to do is you want to cover up the whole hill with these stems. And what I'll do is I'll pause this right now, and then I'll come back, and um, the hill will be made with all the stems. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I made the hill with all the little stems and uh, grass on it. And so next, I'd like to add some flowers. Now I plan on putting three different types of flowers on here. On the top of the hill, I like to put some pretty tulips. In the middle, um, I like to put some nice bright um, daffodils. And then towards the bottom, there's another uh, spring bulb. I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's, it's purple and it's a really good um, bright and cheery flower that um, I would like to see on this hill. So to start with the tulips, um, I'm using the fuchsia ink, and the tulips are quite uh, easy to make. So I use the same brush, um, it should be clean, yep. And the tulips, what you'll do is you'll make a cup for the tulip, like that. They could be thick or thin, however you want the tulips. And what this does is, it, it creates a nice shape, so when, when you do see it on there, um, you kind of have a good idea that they are tulips. And with just going on the outside, because I could fill this up, um, 
it's going to allow me to put a strip of the lemon tonic in the center too. And when they blend together, it's going to be this really pretty um, red uh, flower with, a, with yellow in the center. So when I put this on, cup. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll pause the video for now. I'll put all the tulips in. I'm just going to put on like just about the top third there. And then we'll move to the yellow. Okay, so I just finished putting all the tulips onto the top part of my hill. So next I want to move on to the yellow. And like I said, the yellow will be used in the center of the tulips and it will also be used on my daffodils. Now my daffodils, there will not be a lot of details with this. Basically daffodils, the way I created them, uh, they're just um, some happy squiggles. And I'll show you how that's done. So, take a little bit of the yellow, and it's just squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. And if you want to put a dot in, squiggle, dot, squiggle, dot. And I know this may look very rudimentary, but the, the thing is, it's it's just a watercolor scene, like I said, from afar. And these daffodils are just going to add just a little bit of different shape and fun and uh, color and texture to this. So I'll show you a couple, then I will pause the camera again. Now, if you find that you went really heavy on your green and that your your lemon tonic isn't popping as much as you want. Um, you may want to try on a separate sheet of paper um, honey pot and see how much you like that. Um, that's also a nice, uh, nice yellow. So squiggle dot, squiggle dot. And when you start making these, you'll find that you just get used to making the squiggles and the little dots and They're very, uh, very addictive to make and very fun. They're just so random. Aren't they cute? Okay, so I'm going to pause again and I'll put the daffodils in. Okay, I'm back. So I finished putting the daffodils on. As you can see, just a whole bunch of happy little squiggles. And so next I'm going to fill in my tulips. So I take a little bit of my yellow here and what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to lay it inside each of those cups. And I don't know if you can see that very well, but what it's doing is it's reacting with the pink. And depending on how thick you made the your red uh, cups will determine how, how red or how yellow they look. Oops, I went outside the line there. But isn't it, aren't those pretty? I love the way that turns out. So I'll just show a couple on here. And then again, I'll turn the camera off. Or pause it. And then we will start back up. The yellow definitely adds some more vibrancy and, and glow to that hill. Okay, I'll be right back when those tulips are done. Okay, so now I have the tulips. Those are completed. I have the pretty daffodils below. And next I'm going to go with the purple bulb, uh, bulb flower. And I'm using crushed velvet for this. So this particular flower it has a different shape to it and you'll want to use a, a fine point um, paintbrush for this part um, either by your water brush or, or a thin pointed uh, regular brush. What I'm going to do for this is it's a whole bunch of little dots.
So I'll start by putting a few here. really like how the the purple just pops on this uh, background it um, like the yellow inside the tulips really brought out the yellow of the daffodils below it and now this purple it, it just somehow brings out the the pink in the tulips so there's the star of my flowers um, I'm going to pause it again and I will be right back Okay, everyone, so now I'm back. The purple flowers are now complete. And what I've done, um, and I should have mentioned this in between each step, is um, after I complete a color, I make sure to clean off my mat thoroughly. And I dry this with my uh, heat tool just to make sure that nothing's still wet on it. Um, I realized that because in a sample earlier that I had made, um, it was still wet in one area, and I had it on the side of my hand here, and I ended up getting it in my pretty blue sky. And um, so I don't want that to happen to you, so just make sure that in between each color, um, just wipe everything down, wipe off your hands, and just kind of um, dry your sheet. Um, I don't know, you might not need to do that. I'm just a really messy crafter. <laughs> but anyway, so... We've got our scene down. Um, flowers look happy and pretty. It's a beautiful summer day. So now we want to put in our inspirational quote. And again, um, we like it about right there. So I've already got my uh, stamp platform set up for this. Okay, so it's nice and straight in there. Just to make sure I didn't lose my setup. No, I did not. So for this step, I'm using uh, the waterproof ink in Noir Black. Good push. Oh, you know what? I bet that magnet's going to be in the way. Yep. Yeah, I find one of my magnets makes uh, stamping difficult sometimes, so... You won't want to have your magnet magnets too close to your stamp. There you go. Really super cute. Uh, you know what? I don't like where the D is. I, I don't like that at all. Let me fill it in just a little bit more. There we go. Okay. So that's stamped. I'll give it a good little dry, even though it's probably already dry. Like I said, I'm a messy crafter. And so this next step is what I like to do. You don't have to do it on yours. Um, I like to put a little bit of a frame around some of my uh, card fronts. And this one's just from Pen Touch. Um, but most of mine are, I believe they're Krylons. Yep, so like here's a gold one. And uh, I try to use the tips that are square. If you can kind of see, I'm starting to get an indention in there. That's for the edge of my paper. Um, this is the only gold I had left because I've used all my other ones. And I uh, haven't made it back to grab a new one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the gold just along the edge just to give it a nice pretty frame. So 
So this is easy to do with the thicker papers. If you're using a really thin um, cardstock or pattern paper, then you'll really want to have a nice uh, firm grip on this so this way it doesn't bend while you're going along the edge. Oops. As you can see, my groove is not in this one yet. Yeah, it adds a nice uh, gold edge to all of this. I, I use this method a lot. I really think it's um, a pretty little detail. Now, one thing to be mindful of too is that this is, um, that's wet. And um, so if you, um, if you aren't careful with it, you'll get gold on your fingers and you might accidentally hit your, um, or get some gold on your image. So you won't want that to happen. Okay, while I'm waiting for that to just set for a minute, I'm, did I cut those the right size? Yeah. So before I had wood grain paper underneath here, but I'm out of my wood grain paper now. Um, but the, the craft looks really good behind it too. So with this one, I'm also going to put gold on the edge. Again, just to add a little bit of detail to it. And it kind of saves on the uh, gold cardstock that you might have. Okay, so there's that. And how I'm going to mount this is, um, I find with watercolor paper, sometimes um, tape doesn't stick as well as it should. So what I like to do is, um, just for a little bit of extra security and peace of mind, I use the um, a really good quality um, tape on the underside of it. Oh, and this is definitely a point to make sure that your craft mat is clean, being that uh, you'll be going face down onto it. So this guy is really going to be secure on here. And so I'm mounting it directly onto the brown. You make your little, your little uh, tape tails. You can see all the ink on my fingers. You know it's a good day when you have ink on your fingers. Let's see, so I've got all my tails out. And what I like to do is just center that on from above. Crafting in my craft room is definitely a hazard sometimes. I have a lot of stuff nearby. And sometimes things just fall out of nowhere. Okay, so I have that taped on there. And what I want to do is add a little bit of lift onto this. And so this is when I go to my um, Crafter's Companion foam tape. Um, this is really good foam tape. Um, what I... What I used to do before I started using this foam tape was I would buy the foam tape in a roll and then before I put the tape on the back of um, whatever is being mounted to, I'd have to use a little bit of glue, then put my foam down, put a little bit of glue on again. Because what I found was if I didn't do that, sometimes the, the foam tape would uh, back off. And... You know, that's a little upsetting uh, because, you know, we put a lot of time into our cards and when we give a card to someone, you know, it's, you know, it means a lot. Um, 
we hope to them and we want them to be able to um, have it on display and you know like maybe at their desks or whatever if it's an inspirational card just to um, you know for them to uh, treasure right but when the foam starts to back away then uh, you know it's just a little um, just a little upsetting that's all so knowing that this tape is is out and it's so good and I never have to use uh, glue with it that's a really good thing and I find it's actually better than using the foam tape with the glue because it's a really good oh, my nails are wet it's a really good um, um, adhesive so if you have the opportunity it's on HSN the uh, you get a pack of the of the foam tape it's a large pack too you get a lot of sheets and um, they're all different sizes there's a large pack and a small pack and um, I have one pack of each and yeah I'm very impressed with it it's, it's very good double-sided tape okay so we'll center this guy on that looks pretty good and then the final touch is a little bow I made a whole bunch of little bows earlier and uh, I'll just grab this one here. Hmm. He's got a tail that wants to move. It's kind of long. I'll go with this one. Oh yeah, that one's cute. Okay, so for this, um, I like to use my liquid adhesive. Just put a little bit there. And then I put... A little dab on each bow and then at the top of each tail to, just to kind of keep it where I want it to and then go right oops about there oh I made a mess of that oh it's not too bad so there you go Sweet little watercolor card. Um, it's really happy. I, I think it's this is one of um, one of those cards that it's a good anytime card. Um, it doesn't have to be in spring or in summer or anything. It's it's just um, it would add a little happiness to like I said someone's work desk or at home um, or even a cute little frame. It's just a really happy project. Um, I hope you liked it. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to um, stop over to my blog. It's daisies, um, that's a Y-S, daisies and daffodils. Or you can um, find me on Facebook or um, uh, leave a message here on YouTube. And I'd be more than happy to get back to you. And uh, yeah, and if you have any ideas on other, or um, if you have any tutorials that you'd like to see on prior projects, just drop me a line and I'll add that to my list. So thanks again for stopping by. Be sure to check out Crafter's Companion on HSN, on both the channel and on the website. And um, I will talk to you soon. Have a happy crafty day. Bye.